Want to know how to reach up to 10 million passionate book buyers? My name is David Gochran, and today I'm going to show you how to reach that community of readers using a platform called BookBub Ads. Now, let me just get my mug into the corner here. Okay, so just in case you're not familiar with the BookBub site itself, I recommend just checking it out with your reader hat on rather than your writer hat on. Um, basically what it is, it's kind of like a group on for books, right? So if you as a reader, and I rec actually recommend doing this yourself personally, pop in your email address and hit the sign up button just so you can see the experience that readers go through, but also so that you can get great book recommendations because I personally find that the recommendations they make are excellent. They're, it's a mixture of kind of like household names and undiscovered gems. You'll, you'll see some books from, from large publishers and names you recognize, some from smaller publishers, and then some from self-publishers, indie authors. Um, and it's a nice mix. Um, I tend to buy, you know, three or four books a week just from, from this email. So um, I think it's important to see how it works from the reader side, but also you're going to get some great book recommendations as well. And for cheap too, because um, it's only deals in this book. I think everything is either free, 99 cent, 199 or 299. And especially with those traditionally published authors, like people like Stephen King and Dan Brown, um, they will make appearances in this email and you'll be able to pick up their books for a massive, massive discount. So obviously this has become hugely, hugely popular with readers. And I think they have over 10 million people on their mailing list now. So this is, you know, obviously um, getting your book in front of those readers is something that you will want to do. Now, the, the only problem is the main route for doing that is what's called a BookBub featured deal. Now there's two issues with this. Um, first is that it's quite costly. Um, you can see the prices here on the screen for the biggest list like crime fiction. Um, it can cost anything from almost $800 to promote a free book to if you're doing like a $399 deal or something, it, it rises to an astonishing um, $4,000. Now usually indie authors, and this is what I'd strongly advise anyway, are running free deals or 99 cent deals. But even then, you'll see the cost is quite considerable. And unless you go down to some of the much smaller lists with, with far less readers, then you can see it gets a, a good deal more reasonable. But the main issue is not actually the cost, because as anyone that has run a featured deal knows, um, you usually make your money back within 24 hours. Certainly I have um, on all the occasions that I've, that I've done it. Um, the cost isn't really the big stumbling block. Getting accepted is because so many authors and publishers want to use this platform, want to reach this passionate community of, of 10 million, uh, over 10 million readers, um, that it, it's almost impossible to get a featured deal, especially if you're an author starting out, you don't have a lot of sales yet, you, you're not like a New York Times bestseller, you're not you know, published by Penguin Random House, you don't have you know, all sorts of lovely review quotes or you know, all these things that could, will help you get accepted. You don't have any followers on the BookBub platform. Um, you know, all the different things that they look at um, when deciding which books to pick. Um, so it's going to be a lot harder for someone started out. I think BookBub say they only accept 20% of the applications they receive, but I'm guessing that Dan Brown has a better chance than 20% when, when his, his publisher or agent or whatever puts in, puts in the request for a promotion. So, so your chances probably are a little less than 20%. Um, and also if you're in Kindle Unlimited, if you're exclusive to Amazon, your chances of getting accepted are much, much lower. They, they don't ban Kindle Unlimited books. They're just less likely to pick them because um, they actually have millions of readers who buy books at the other platforms because they serve Apple, they serve Kobo, Google Play, um, Barnes & Noble as well. And it's actually international as well. They, they work in five markets. It's US, UK, Canada, Australia, and India is the last one. So... They generally want. They generally prefer books that are available everywhere, so that all their readers can avail of the deal. So, if you're in Kindle Unlimited, you've, it's really, really difficult to get a feature deal. It's not impossible. You should still apply. You should still accept it. If you know, if if, if you get accepted, you should definitely go for it. But the, you know, you don't have control over it. You can't decide that you're just going to have a feature deal to support your launch because chances are they're going to say no. And even if they say yes, you won't necessarily get it on the date you need. So the reason why BookBub Ads is such a cool platform is that you know it's totally open for everyone. There's no curation, so you don't have to wait to be picked. You can run the ads whatever dates you like. You can target whoever you like. Um, you can run ads to Kobo owners in Canada or Apple users in Australia. If there's a particular market that you want to build up more aggressively, um, if there's a particular readership you want to go after, it's, it's very flexible on that front. But honestly, even though it's my favorite platform, a lot of people have trouble getting started with it. Um, 
I know from talking to, to hundreds of authors at this point, because um, I've done a, um, I've, I've written a book on, on how to use this platform. Um, so I get I'm in contact with a lot of re, um, authors all the time and their struggles. And they, re, they often really struggle to get going. So I wanted to just do a quick video, show you how to use the ad creation interface and um, show you just a few little tricks with it that will help you with the performance of your ads. But just in case you're wondering where these ads actually pop up, let me show you the email. I think this, this email actually arrived today from, it was yesterday from BookBub. So you can see that the, the um, categories that I'm subscribed to, Fantasy, there's CJ Archer. Um, I think she's an indie. Frank Herbert is um, the author of Dune, not an indie. Um, so you can see the mix there right away. And there's literary fiction. Another literary fiction, usually there's just one or two deals in each category. They don't overload the readers. They tend to uh, they tend to experiment with a couple of different things and just see what people respond to best. And you can see these are just the categories I'm subscribed to. They won't they won't send me like you know romance or thriller because I, I don't read in those genres. Um, so I didn't select them when signing up. They'll only send you deals in in the genres that you've actually picked. So I just pick the ones that I that I read and that I work in personally here. You can see all the deals. You can see they're all, you know, top quality books, mixture of, you know, names that you know, um, big topics, well presented. But, you know, indies do have a chance of getting picked there. There's indies in the email every day. Um, so definitely go for it. But this is what I want to focus on here at the bottom. This is the ad slot. There's one ad slot in every single email. So, you know, you're not competing for attention with other advertisers. But of course, you're you're competing for attention with, with all these guys here. Sometimes you're you're competing with you know J.K. Rowling and Dan Brown and stuff. So your ads have to be good for them to work. We will talk about exactly how to do that in a moment. And um, but this is the ad slot. The other place the ads um, appear is on the website. But honestly, um, most of the action is by email. Those ones tend to perform better in my experience. And sometimes I set it up just so that they go out in the email and I forget about the website. But um, we, we'll deal with all that in a moment. Um, I just wanted to show you where these ads actually appear. So, you know, there'll be over 10 million emails going out to readers every day. And b believe it or not, this little ad slot at the bottom of all these books um, can generate a stunning amount of sales. Um, once you get experience with the platform and you know what you're doing and you've done all your testing and all that stuff we'll talk about now in a second. Um, so to, uh, to actually start running ads on the platform, you need to go open a BookBub Partners um, account. This is the website here, partners.bookbub.com. It, it's on a separate kind of uh, subdomain to the actual reader side of BookBub. There's a reader side and then there's kind of an, an author a partner side, I guess. Um, and that's where you will actually apply for a feature deal. That's where you can set up your profile. So, you know, even if you're not ready to start advertising yet, even if you're not ready to apply for a feature, feature deal, I recommend that you create a partner account. I recommend you sign up as a reader, first of all, so you see what these emails look like and just so you can avail of the deals to yourself. They're cool. Um, but also set up a partner account, even if you're not quite ready to, to get going on the BookBub platform, because like Goodreads, BookBub is building all these kind of social aspects to the site. They're adding things like reviews and ratings and, and you can follow people and all that kind of thing. And that they're slowly building that up all the time. So I just think it's good, even if you're not going to actually spend any time on the platform or spend any money on the platform, just make sure that your profile is set up and that it looks good and that you're attractive for, for readers to follow. And you will start passively collecting follows. Like, like if I just show you my website for a second. And, um, you know, this is pretty much the most I do to get follows is just stick a button in, in a few places on my website. Um, I think I mention it when people sign up to my onboarder uh, for my mailing list. And I do that for, for my different author names. You know, I have separate book book profiles for, for each of my identities. So this is my, my nonfiction author name. So you see the, the three books that are currently available on sale at retailers um, under this name. And you just want to make sure that you have like, you know, a nice catchy little blurb. You can see I can actually link to my website and encourage people to go and sign up to my mailing list because they'll get a free book. And, you know, they actually allow you to do a hot link here, which is cool. You know, that's also good for your SEO, by the way. Um, so don't forget to do little things like that um, before you start advertising, just so you're all set up to collect all the followers that will come in once you start running ads and running featured deals. That's actually, you know, um, along with collecting followers yourself through, you know, your own email list or, you know, telling people on Facebook to follow you, whatever. And um, the huge chunk of your followers are just going to come from running ads 
and running featured deals. So you want to make sure this is nice and attractive and then, then you'll get more people following you from whatever money you're spending or whatever action you're, you're engaging in on the platform. And I've just started ex exploring the social aspects personally. Um, just started recommending some books for my nonfiction audience. These are all different nonfiction books and specific, specifically books for writers that I've enjoyed and found useful. And I'm, I think, you know, it's, I can see the power of the social side of it because now that I have like, I think I have 7,000 followers now. When I recommend a book, it, it doesn't generate massive sales for the, for the author, but I can see just looking at the Amazon rankings, it does a bit. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how all that grows over time. But I just wanted to mention it so that you set up your profile right away, even if you're not ready to advertise. And definitely, if you're about to advertise or apply for a feature deal, make sure that all your books are there. Contact BookBub if they're not appearing. Um, and you can edit all this stuff. You know, you can you can ask them to put you in certain categories. You can write your own little bio there, um, and yeah, and just make sure it's all it's all it all looks good and that you're ready to get follows from readers. Okay, so let's go back to the actual ad creation interface because what we want to focus on in this video is how to create ads. And if you if you if you don't know how to get to this ad creation interface. Any, anywhere you are in the BookBub partner site, like it's pretty well signposted, but just in case you're lost, these three little lines on the left-hand side, just click those out and you'll get hot links taking you to the different, uh, the different, the different things that, that BookBub offer authors. And you can explore all those. Um, I'm sure we'll, we'll do videos covering a lot of those in the future. But for now, we're focusing on BookBub ads. So just click on that and that'll take you to the ad creation interface. Now I'm just gonna move my um, head down out of the way so I can actually create, <laughs> let's, let's do that. Uh, so I can actually click that create an ad button, which is kind of crucial here for this, for this video. Um, so let's, let, let's click create an ad. Now, the, because I created a dummy account just to um, have a clean interface to show you what to do, you're gonna, when you first, when you first start up, you're gonna get all this information from BookBub on how to use the ad platform, and it's all pretty good, you know. I recommend um, going through it. There is a lot of useful information there. BookBub actually have a wonderful blog as well that you should really, really should check out. Like it's genuinely um, good information. Um, the guys that work for BookBub really know their marketing, and they also have lots of guest posts there, including one from me on on BookBub ads. Actually, if you want to want to check that out. But um, anyway, we can skip all this guff for now. Um, because I'm just gonna try and shortcut a lot of this for you and just show you just a few quirks of the ad creation interface. Now, the unusual thing about this ad creation interface is how simple it is, right? And like, if you scroll down, you can see there, that's it, right? There's only a confirmation page after you fill everything out and then your ad starts running and it starts running like almost straight away. And so it'll start spending your money almost straight away. Even like before the reporting on this, platform is way, way better than, you know, Facebook ads and absolutely slays Amazon ads. Um, it's near instantaneous or as, in, as close as you can get in the digital advertising world. It's remarkably fast, but even, even as fast as it is, it'll spend your money even faster. So um, just keep that in mind and be very careful when it comes to budgets and things until you know you have an ad that works for you. Okay, let's start at the top here because, you know, as simple as this interface is on the surface, there's a few little decisions baked into it. Um, there's, a, there's, there's a little bit of complexity going on under the hood here. Um, I think it's just very, very well designed, arguably too well designed because some people don't realize a couple of the little options that you have or, or maybe the import of some of the decisions you're making here in the interface. That might be a good way to put it. Um, for example, right here at the start, you're told to choose a book. Now, for the, for the purposes of this experiment, I invented um, an author name and I made myself a little a little book cover in Canva. I did this. I did this this morning while I was having breakfast. It only took me a few minutes. Um, Canva is a wonderful tool, by the way. It's free. Uh, you can do all sorts of cool things with it. I am not a designer, and I was able to turn out this in. I don't know. It took me five or ten minutes. I I don't think it's that bad, actually. I just took a stock photo and just you know put an author name and a title on it. Um, imagining that I'm this uh, psychological thriller author called Musty Rivers, which um, is quite an excellent pen name and I might actually have to use it. Um, I should really check if someone hasn't used it already, I could be slandering someone um, live here on YouTube. Okay, so I am this author for the purposes of this demonstration, um, Musty Rivers. Um, and I've already made my little book of ad here. And you can see I have a cool tagline there. The next victim is you. 
um, which might actually that might actually might work quite well. I was just I was just trying to knock something up quickly because this is not a tutorial on on ad graphics. And actually, you know, if you look down in the description, I'll put a link to a video I did a, uh, just a couple of days ago about how to use Canva to make cool graphics like this for free. Even if you're not a designer, I'm definitely not a designer. I'm not artistic at all. But honestly, like the the tools, like the software these days these days is so good that anybody can turn out professional looking graphics like this really quickly, especially using this method, by the way, which I talk about in the other video of using, you can see I, I use the cover art here as the background. And I find that, I, I, I find I get excellent results with that approach. Now, let's go back to the ad creation interface and I am Musty Rivers and I am looking to create my first BookBub ad. Now, because I don't actually exist uh, yet, let's see what happens. Because I don't actually exist, I will not find Musty Rivers um, I won't find Musty Rivers in the in the database here. So let's pretend I am James Patterson. Why not? Fun to pretend you're a billionaire for a day, right? Okay. So let's say I was just just for just to show you what happens when you pick a book in the interface. Let's pretend I'm James Patterson and I'm running my own ads, which is quite a funny thing to imagine. And um, I just want to show you the effect of associating a book with the ad because you actually don't have to do this. And sometimes people can't find their book in the interface and they think they can't run an ad. You can, you, it doesn't matter. You don't have to actually do this step. I just want to show you what happens when you do. So we're advertising this book, Hawk by James Patterson. And BookBub then starts to build a little ad graphic for you. They actually have a little thing here where you can do like, you know, free or read now. Or, and then you can put in like a tagline, you know, amazing. And like, you know, that was a review quote from... Um, New York Times or something, you know. Um, this image generator, it's, it's a pretty nifty piece of software, but in terms of, you know, will this be an effective ad, I'm skeptical. I think, you know, we can do a lot better. Um, I just wanted to show you what happens when you associate a book so you're not confused in case you do pick your book out. Um, the only other effect is it starts pulling in the links. Um, well, it tries to. You can see some are missing. Um, it only has Amazon Canada and US. It doesn't have all of the links. And I... And I find this with my own books that sometimes it just pulls in about half the links. So if you are doing that, just be careful that it does have all the links that you want. Um, and if the links are correct, you can just check any of them by clicking these little buttons here on the right-hand side. And I always recommend doing that. You definitely don't wanna spend money pointing people at the wrong webpage or a broken webpage, it's the worst. Um, and that's the only effect of associating a book aside from some little extra data that it will collect for you to analyze afterwards. But really you can figure that out yourself anyway. So what all I'm saying is do not stress if you can't find your book because I'm not going to associate a book here and you'll see I'll be able to run an ad anyway. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to upload, we're going to skip the book name because we don't need to associate a book um, and we're just going to upload our creative that we've, we've made already. So I'm just going to upload that into, into the interface and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so... This is the actual size. If you remember from that email I showed you, um, this is the actual size. Well, I think I'm, I have my, because um, I'm getting on a bit, I think I have my, I have my um, screen zoomed in a bit there. So that's the actual size that a reader will see, assuming they have normal zoom in their, in their um, Gmail or whatever. Um, so it's, it's important that your design actually works at that size, right? Because like when you're, and this is a problem with, um, even professional designers can make this mistake sometimes. You know, we're designing in a piece of software like this where everything is big and it looks great. And especially those designers, you know, they had those massive monitors often. So they had these giant ads and, you know, these lovely little details and everything. And then you actually look at it, how it's actually going to appear. Um, where are we? It's actually, yeah, there we are. How it's actually going to appear to a reader and it's quite small. So that's why... Um, my book of ads are sometimes a little cheesy, you could say, because like I just make sure they're simple and striking and that, you know, I, there's only one or two things um, calling for the reader's attention, usually a price tag in the book or a tagline in the book. You know, I, I keep it very, very simple, almost obnoxiously simple, like especially if it's like a free book, I will put free in giant letters somewhere there in the ad. Um, something that, you know, designers might be pulling their hair out over, but honestly, it is the most effective but um, what I will do is I will test several different iterations of the image. And that's how I know all this. That's how I know 
what book club audiences tend to respond to because I'm always testing to see what gets best results. So, but for the purpose of this um, uh, demonstration, we're going to assume that this is our ad image um, and we're, all, we're not gonna test variations, but you probably will um, when you're first doing your testing until you know what the readers you're targeting really respond to. And it'll take a few experiments, a few tests until you get that sense for yourself. Okay, so that's the image. You upload the image and make sure to, to check out that tutorial I have on how to use Canva because you know you can you can hire a designer and they'll charge anything between 20 or 50 or, or God knows for, for something like this. It's, it, it can be cheap, but sometimes designers can charge a bit more because honestly, this is a, a quick job and most of their time will be spent in emails to you. And it's just, it's a bit of hassle for them when they could be doing a book cover or something else where they can earn a few hundred dollars. So I can, sometimes it's hard to find a designer for a job like this because it's too small. Um, but really the, the easiest thing is, you know, when you're getting your book cover designed, to ask your designer to throw in a few ad graphics like this, you know, throw in a few, um, you know, um, like a header graphic you can use on Facebook, something you can use on your website, on Twitter, you know, different promotional graphics. And most designers will bundle them either for, you know, low cost or no cost, or they'll factor in, in into the price. My designer just charges a little bit extra for the book cover and then bundles, like, I think he throws in like, you know, 15, 20 different graphics I can use um, or one, you know, ones that I can manipulate myself and throw in a price tag. Um, and that that's usually the easiest thing to do. But the problem with that, even that approach is, let's say you want to test a variation. Let's say I want to put in a price tag or something, you know, it's, it's handy to know even a little bit of Canva so you can do something like that, put in a, a price tag or a free offer or a new release badge or, or something like that. You don't want to be going back to your designer every 10 minutes looking for another variation, you know, um, either you'll annoy them or it'll end up costing you too much. So it's good to know how to assemble um, a basic promotional graphic like this for yourself. So definitely check out those tutorials in the, in the description below. Um, okay. So that's the image sorted. Um, there's, there's basically two elements to success on BookBub and it's image and targeting. And that's it. Once you nail down your image and once you nail down your targeting, your ads will be successful. And um, the problem is nailing down those two and trying to nail down two things at once can be confusing because um, I don't know how much you know personally about digital advertising, but one of the keys to success is doing something called split testing. And this is where you try and figure out what in the ad is working for you and what isn't. So if I was running, um, if I was running this ad and I was targeting James Patterson, for example, and I am, let's say I only got 1% CTR, which is not great. And then I decided to run another ad, but I changed the ad graphic and then decided to target test Gerritsen instead, thinking she might be a better fit for this book. And um, then I won't know, let's say, and let's say the ad does better. Let's say I get 1.5%. I won't know which of those changes actually led to my increased performance. Was it switching the author or was it switching the image? So change one thing at a time, test, change another thing, test. And that's, that's how you do a split test. You compare the results, changing only one element in the test. And with BookBub, there is only two elements. So it is relatively easy to isolate what's problematic and what's working for you. Okay, so we have the image pretty much nailed down. So what we have to nail down now is the targeting. Now, there's a whole bunch of ways to target on BookBub. You can target by retailer. You can target by, by territory, like by country. Um, you can target by category, and you can target by author. Now, I'm going to make this super simple for you in terms of um, a random Amazon link, because, you know, Musty Rivers has yet to actually publish anything, but let's pretend that's his Amazon link. Now, what I've done in there is I've dropped in an Amazon.com link, and you can see the system has automatically um, picked it up as Amazon US. It's you, and it will do the same if you drop in a you know Kobo UK link or a Barnes and Noble America link. It will recognize it, and it, this this text here will update. Um, you can also check the link yourself by click, clicking on this green button, and that will pop out into a new window, and you can just check it's going to the right place. Now I'm only going to put in Amazon US here, and that's what I recommend you do for testing. Now the thing about the Amazon US market. Um, and I like to run BookBub ads, by the way, to all retailers in all countries. And BookBub is probably the best platform out there in terms of something that can specifically target on that granular level. Like if I only want to build up my Kobo audience in Australia or my Amazon audience in Australia, and I want to throw a bit of extra money towards that because I feel like I'm missing an opportunity, I can do that with BookBub ads. 
you can technically do it with Facebook ads, but sometimes it can be hard to get those ads to serve, especially in those smaller markets. Whereas BookBub, that's not a problem for the most part. Um, I find it's the best tool for that job personally. Um, but when I'm testing, and oh, by the way, the reason why I like to target those other retailers, even though they're much smaller than Amazon, especially when you're talking about you know um, countries with a far lower population, um, like Australia um, or Canada or UK or whatever, much smaller countries than, than the US and much less digital penetration in terms of um, ebook numbers. You know, it's a much smaller market overall. Um, but I love targeting those markets because a lot of people don't. So there's a big opportunity there, especially all the authors who can't because they're exclusive to Amazon. So there is a big opportunity there. I find the clicks are cheaper. There's less competition. And also on the reader side of the fence, they're more deal hungry. And by that, I mean, um, the average Amazon US customer is going to be, face an avalanche of deals every day because that's the main market. It's the biggest market. It's the most lucrative market. Um, so all, there's all sorts of services and tools and deals running constantly. They just have a nonstop choice of free and 99 cent books, basically. Whereas the average reader in Australia faces much higher book prices normally. The average reader in, on Kobo in Canada is probably paying more for their eBooks than the average Amazon customer. Prices just tend to trend higher in that market. But that's a huge opportunity for you when you're running a free deal or a 99 cent deal or a 199 deal, whatever. Um, that makes your deal incredibly attractive to those readers. So I find it's easier to get an ad, um, easier to get a good performing ad in those markets. You'll have cheaper clicks, you have more responsive readers. It's fantastic. So why the hell am I recommending that you test in Amazon US? It's because it's more difficult, right? If you just run a test ad to Kobo Canada, for example, you probably get a 3% CTR or something without breaking sweat. Um, because those people are so hungry for deals that they jump on anything anything going. But that could be masking some problems in your ad. Maybe the author you're targeting isn't quite a good fit for your book. Maybe the image you're using isn't quite there yet and it needs another iteration to make it a bit more pro. You won't find that out by running test ads to Canada or Australia or to Kobo or Apple. You most certainly will find it out if you run it to the hardest market, Amazon US, because it's it's much tougher to get... I usually like to get my ads up to like 2% CTR when I'm testing or there, thereabouts. Um, I'll talk about that in, in more detail in a moment. Um, but it's harder to get there with Amazon US. But I know that once I've got an ad image and my targeting, once, I'm, once an ad is basically, once an ad is a winner in Amazon US, I know I can roll it out internationally to all retailers. And I know for sure, for a fact, it's going to work everywhere, right? Um, basically, it's the best proving ground and it will... It will be ruthless in exposing any flaws in your targeting or any improvements you need to make in your image. And so that's why you must test on Amazon US. You know, there will be exceptions to that, of course, if there's an author who only really has a UK audience or whatever. But in general, do your testing in Amazon US, and then you can scale up your budget, roll it out everywhere with confidence that it's going to spend it well, and the ad's going to perform well. But only if you do the testing first, and only if you do it in Amazon US first. So there we go. Um, Focus on Amazon US for testing. Target everywhere your books are available when running normal campaigns. And that's taking care of the retailer and the uh, territorial targeting. So that just means we've got two elements left of the targeting to, to nail down. And now this is where authors usually make um, their first big mistake. Um, because you've got two choices here. You can target by author or you can target by category. And authors tend to think this is a kind of a binary choice, but actually my recommendation is to do both. Now, in the cases of, uh, what's my name again? Musty Rivers, right? In the case of Musty Rivers here, he's writing um, serial killer thrillers. So let's see which categories would be appropriate. And now we're going to do both because with BookBub ads, it's not like Facebook ads really, where you can kind of target a broad audience and often get away with it. Um, you have to drill down quite a lot with BookBub ads to get your ads to work. So um, the categories you can pick um, exactly map these categories of the different email lists that you can take out a featured deal on um, because that's how the ads are primarily delivered to customers, never forget. They come in by email. And that's one of the huge advantages of BookBub because email converts like nothing else. And so I see conversion rates on these BookBub ads um, that you rarely see on Facebook and you never see on Amazon ads. And that's one of the reasons why I love this platform so much. So first of all, pick your category. Uh, you'll see all the categories are broken down here. They've handily grouped them into, you know, similar categories because you might want to target more than one category at once. You know, for example, theoretically here, like psychological thrillers is an obvious fit for for um, 
musty rivers, um, thrillers as well, crime fiction could be. And what happens is when you pick more than one category, um, it, it doesn't look for someone who is subscribed to all of these lists. It just adds them all together. So you're just, you're creating a very large audience there. So um, I recommend testing, you know, if you have a couple, like if you, if you write you know, some crime fiction, you could be, you know, in, to, theoretically in a few different categories. And there's probably will be more than, more than one category where your, your, um, your book will conceivably fit. Now, if you just write straight up fantasy and that's the only category, great. That, that just simplifies things for you. Just select that. Don't worry about anything else. But if you are one of these um, authors where you could conceivably be in a couple of these categories, you can try targeting all of them. But my personal recommendation, especially when starting out, is just to drill down to the one that is the best fit for your work, that you think is the best fit for your work. Um, and you can get a sense of that basically by looking at the daily emails that book will puts in that category. So you know what they mean when they say psychological thriller, because it might be slightly different to your conception, but just in general, you probably have a good sense here of what's gonna work for you. Psychological thrillers, I think will do the business for Musty Rivers. So let's do that. And later on, you can test in adding these other ones, these kind of adjacent categories to see if they work for you as well, but keep it simple during testing, pick the one category that you think is the best fit for your, for your audience or for your book and add it in. And next you want to also add in an author and just keep an eye on this little dial on the right hand side here. You'll see it's, it's fairly crude, but it gives you enough information really. Basically, if you're in the yellow, you definitely need to drill down. Your ad's going to be a total train wreck. If you're in the red, it's probably not even going to serve because you're not targeting enough people. So this means it's too broad. This means it's too narrow. You want it up the middle here and um, in the green zone. But you know, there's, there's a bit of nuance to that, which we'll see in a second, but this is definitely too broad because we haven't even added in an author. I've never seen anyone really target a category on its own and make it work. Um, certainly not for your testing. That would be um, rather foolish indeed. So in terms of authors, which authors do you target? Now, you might have a fairly good idea already of who you're, we call them comp authors, comparable authors. Um, and basically, it's, it's, it's not authors that you write like. This is the big mistake everyone makes of comp authors. They, they start thinking in, in terms of, of style or voice or something like that. A, a, a true comp author when it comes to book advertising is somebody you share an audience with, someone who's aiming at the same target audience. And um, you might have very different styles. Your books might be presented in different ways. But if an author, if you think you share an audience with an author, then definitely target them with your ads, certainly test them. Um, and don't, I think a lot of authors they kind of get a bit nervous about saying that Dan Brown, for example, is a comp author or some famous author or some very, very talented author or some, you know, loaded down with awards or whatever. It's not about that. You're not saying you're the next Dan Brown. You're saying you're aiming for the same set of readers. Just think of it in marketing terms. Don't think of it in terms of acclaim or accomplishments or, or, or literary terms or, or style. Think of it purely in marketing terms, purely in terms of audience and that you're aiming for the same readers. You're aiming for the same readers as Dan Brown then he's a comp author for you, or at least worth testing. Now, um, if you want a bit more on all that process, check down in the description. I'll put a link there as well. I have a blog post and um, it's really easy to find in case I forget to put in the link and uh, just type in uh, how to find comp authors. And because my SEO game is legit, I think I'm the number one result on Google for that. Um, and that's a whole blog post you can read through, the whole process that I recommend for coming up with a whole list of comp authors. And, and I do recommend you do a specific comp list, a uh, comp author list for BookBub ads, because you know you might, you might have an author you target like, like James Patterson, for example. Um, so if I was Musty Rivers and I was running a Facebook ad, I might target James Patterson because sometimes those bigger authors, and um, sometimes it can be hard to find an author to specifically target on Facebook. And you often have to pick those more famous traditionally published bigger authors, you know, household name kind of guys. Um, so I might well target James Madison. And because Facebook is a different platform that um, sometimes it's great to target big, broad audiences on Facebook these days. So that could really work for me on Facebook and it won't work on BookBub. And I'll show you why right now. So let's add in an author. Now, when you've started running a few ads, the, the system is getting pretty smart and it'll start showing you your previous performance. But because this is a, a brand new account, um, there's nothing there, but when you start running, it will start showing like your, and it'll put the, the best performing authors for you previously near the top. 
which is quite a handy little quality of life feature. But for now, we we haven't Musty Rivers hasn't run an ad yet, and um, so we're gonna we're gonna start at the top. And I think he's probably the biggest author on BookBub, um, certainly up there. Anyway, he, you can see he's got an astonishing amount of of readers on the platform on BookBub specifically, not in the world. He probably has hundreds of millions of readers in the world, but just on BookBub specifically, there's an audience of 1.9 million readers that your ad will go out to. And just, I want to explain quickly a little bit of difference between um, some metrics that confuse people, because this isn't the amount of followers he has on BookBub. Um, I don't know how many followers he has. We can probably just check that quickly now, just to compare. James Patterson. Uh, there we go. Oh, he does have quite a lot of followers. Okay, wow, that's an astonishing amount of followers. Uh, 1.8 million. But let's look at another author. Let's look at Tess Garrison. We just click on her there. This is the reader side of BookBub, by the way. It's good for, good for snooping. And you'll see she has 887,000 followers, which is an astonishing amount. So the difference between the follower count and the reader count is this. And a follower account are all the people that are actually have actively clicked on the button and are following them on 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 BookBub. And um, the readers is all the people that are following them plus everyone that's ever clicked on a James Patterson deal or reviewed one of his books on the platform or just interacted with his books on the platform in any way. And they're all the people that your ad will go out to. So this is the number you got to watch. And if you want the sweet spot, and um, because I I don't know anybody that can target James Patterson and make it work really. And most of those big trad authors are near impossible to target. It's very, very difficult. I find the sweet spot is usually between about 10,000 readers at a minimum, just so you have enough to get it rolling to about 100,000. Now, um, 50,000 is, 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 is ideal somewhere around there, but you know, you can make an ad work with a hundred thousand or 10,000 and um, sometimes more than a hundred thousand, but I find things start getting really wobbly. They get a little bit wobbly north of 50,000 north of a hundred thousand readers. It starts getting very difficult. So, I know for a fact that James Patterson will be a tricky author to target. And even though it's going to say well-defined here, because I've only picked one author, have it narrowed by a category and also have it narrowed by this. It's not going out to India or Apple or anywhere else. So you can see that's come down to quite a bit, but that's still too broad. I'll tell you from my experience, that's still too broad for BookBub. You need to target smaller authors. Now, if you are insistent that your audience is the same as James Patterson's and his readers will very much respond to your books, feel free to test it. I'm a great believer in testing everything, but I'm highly confident that you will fail. So what you want to find is smaller authors. So now let's think about this for a second. If I'm writing psychological thrillers, who might be kind of a smaller person in that area? Maybe someone like John Sanford. Okay, he's still too big. You can see he had 362,000 readers. Um, and just to see the difference with his actual followers, because I'm curious. Uh, just click on them here. Okay, 274,000. So you can see your ad goes out to more than his follower number there. He's 274,000 actual followers that have clicked the follow button here, but your ad will actually go out to over 100,000 more than that, um, potentially, if you, you know, gave the ad a huge budget, it could go out to that many people. So that's still too high a number. We wanna get that number lower, right? So. I tend to find that the big household names um, are often too big to target, but I like to keep trying them because some of them end up being small authors on BookBub. And here's a good example. Thomas Harrod is a huge author, of course. He's the author of um, Science of the Lambs. He invented Hannibal Lecter, for God's sake. Um, but you can see he has a relatively small amount of readers. And this actually makes him an excellent target for an ad. So I would certainly run a test to Thomas Harris, and I'd be pretty confident, uh, assuming that, you know, the, the content is a good fit and the readers respond to the cover and that. But I, I would assume that, you know, um, all those things being equal, Thomas Harris, just by the size of the reader count, is an excellent target for your ad. Um, and when I'm running, and you need more than one author, of course, so we're going to start looking for more. Um, so in this area, maybe, maybe Christopher Grayson would be a good target. Let's see. 46,000, that's a near perfect number. Um, who else? Uh, maybe Jeff Carson. And now um, you'll see there's three authors with a similar name here. Um, Jeff Carson is the guy I'm actually looking for. And then there's Jeff Carlson. And there's two other guys called Jeff Carson. So sometimes you'll see authors with the same name. 
And you definitely want to make sure you're picking the right one. But luckily, there's you can see this little green box. You can actually um, click the author profile. So if I thought it was Jeff Carlson, I just couldn't remember. I can see, no, it's not this guy. Um, it must be the other guy. And I check him. And I see, yes, the, the, that's the thriller author. That's the guy. That's the guy that I want to target. And so then I can just select him and add him into the mix as well. Now, when I'm running a regular campaign, um, when I'm running a regular campaign, I would take all my winning authors, and I usually like to end up with four or five. Like more is better, obviously, but I usually like to come out of the testing process with four or five reasonably sized authors that I can target. If I only end up with three, you know, I'll live with that at the start, and then I'll add more in as I get more experience and and discover more authors on the platform that work for me. But you could make it work with, with, with three. But this is what I would do running a regular campaign, right? Um, after I finish testing. But because I'm testing now, and I need to test each of these guys individually to see if they actually work for me. So what I would do is I would just run one at a time. I would start with Thomas Harris, and I would run one ad, and I would spend very little money on it, from $5, $10, $15 tops. And that would be able to tell me whether Thomas Harris is going to work for me on this platform. And then I would go back and test Jeff Carson. And then I would go back and test you know, Christopher Grayson and, and all the other people that I think are potential good targets for me. Test each one of them individually. And then you, you will know by the results whether they're working for you. And the, and the general yardstick um, is around 2%. I like to be hitting 2% or close to it. Well, I really like to be hitting a lot more than that. Sometimes you, know, you can really get a good match with the testing and you can get three, four percent, sometimes more, great. But if you're looking for what to aim for in the testing process, um, I would accept 2%. I would even sometimes accept um, lower than that, you know, 1.5%. Um, I'd probably, you know, say, okay, that target's gonna work for me. Maybe I need to work on the image a little bit more. Sometimes you gotta go back and forth on these things until the, the ad is working for you. Um, but yeah, so you got to test one at a time, spend $5, $10, $15, um, and you put in the campaign budget here. Now, the reason why I can't be exact on what you should spend, I, I would like you to spend $15 on each test, but I, I also understand that you, know, you could be testing 10, 20, 30 authors, and that starts to add up, and you might want to keep that, some of that money for your actual you know, marketing campaign rather than the testing process, where you're going to naturally have to kiss a few frogs. You're going to be getting some mixed results. You're going to have winners. You're going to have losers. And most of their tests will probably end up being losers, right? Because BookBub is a very, very sensitive platform. Um, but all you need to do, you know, if I, if I run 10, 15, 20 test ads and I get three or four winners out of that, I consider that a very successful testing period. So don't worry about it. If you're hitting a lot of duds, just hold on to the good ones. That's all you need. But yeah, $15 per test, that might end up being a little bit expensive for some people. They might not have the budget for that. They might be a bit nervous about spending that kind of money before they know if this platform is going to work for them. So you can put in less. You know, you can you can put in you can put in as low as a dollar. But you know, I can tell you from I've been working in digital advertising on and off since 2005. And it's been a long-standing rule of thumb in digital advertising and in statistics generally that you really need a good sample size to be sure that your test results are accurate and that they're going to scale well, right? So that you can actually turn up the juice on, a, on an ad that's working for you and really get it delivering hundreds, even potentially thousands of sales for you. Um, but if you only spend $5, you're not getting a very big sample size. I like to spend 15, 10 is perfectly acceptable. If you're on a tight budget, five is fine. Um, you won't. you probably won't get a thousand impressions, which I really like to see in a test. Um, when you drop $10 instead of 15, you might only get 900. That's fine. I can live with that. Uh, if you're dropping $5, you might only get four or 500 impressions. Okay. We can make that work if, if money's a bit tighter, but if money's less of a concern, put in 15, make sure you get over a thousand impressions for each of your tests. And that will really give you a solid sense that this author is going to work for you or not. Now. That's the targeting section. Um, test each of your authors individually. Look at my posts on how to identify comp authors. Like you will hear from your readers, you know who you write. Like you'll see it in your Amazon also bots. You'll have some sense from testing on other platforms or just from reading in your genre. Uh, and then you can also look around on the BookBub platform yourself. But check out that blog post that goes through a whole method for you to to find your own comp authors. Now down to the schedule and budget. You've got to be careful here because this is this is where money gets spent. Um, I never run an ad continuously, really. I always like to have a start date and an end date. I personally, I know people who do run ads continuously and 
you know, especially like lower budget ads, just pushing, pushing a perma free book with a small budget every day. That's fine. But just personally, as a best practice for advertising in general, I always like to put in a date range and a date that the ad is actually going to end. Um, I think it was a couple of years ago when on, on Facebook, I was doing some experimental ad and um, I didn't put in an end date. And then I think I, I got sick for a few weeks and it was spending my money happily on an ad, which wasn't doing anything for me and I ended up wasting a huge amount of money. So ever since then, I'm still kind of scarred by it. I just like to put in an end date. But, you know, there is going to be a limit to what you're spending anyway, because we're only doing a test. Um, let's say we're doing $10. Okay. Good night's an even number. And I always recommend, and I never, ever actually switch this. I always actually recommend saying fulfill as quickly as possible. When you're doing a test ad, you want the results quickly. Um, you, you could do it cheaper than I'm doing it and, and spread out the testing of each author over several days and then get, you know, really cheap impressions. I don't recommend that. I think it's more scientific. You've got sounder data if you're getting your results faster. So I want to just, you know, drop $10, $15, get the results fast, get the results in a couple of hours, move on to the next round of testing. So I usually say fulfill as quickly as possible. Let's say it's $10 and then the bidding. This causes a lot of angst and, you know, there's a lot of debate over this. I'm a firm believer in CPM bidding um, when you're running your regular campaigns. Um, I think it is a little bit riskier, but when you know what you're doing, when you've done your testing, if you follow the advice that I give you, um, CPM bidding will work out way, way cheaper. You'll end up with better ads. You'll become a better advertiser because it teaches you, it forces you to, to make your ads better. Um, and once your ads are good, you're going to be getting costs which are half or less than anyone running the CPC, CPC ads, in my opinion. But that's a debate for another day. When it comes to testing, you have no choice. You, you really have to do CPM bidding. It's the only way to guarantee you're going to get enough serving to get clean results and clean data. Do not do, even if you are insistent on doing CPC ads for your regular campaigns, please do CPM for your testing. Now, what kind of bid should you put in? BookBub is giving you a little bit of a guide here. And the guide is usually good enough, you know, it's, it's in the region. Um, and it's, but it's quite a big range there between seven and, and 12. And that's for a block of a thousand impressions, which remember is what we're shooting for. So um, I usually recommend building, bidding at the upper end of this range, which is based on what people are bidding live. Um, I think it's reasonably live um, for this particular list and this particular author. It estimates what you will need to win the auction and serve. Because remember, if we, if we go back to that email, there's only one ad slot here, you know? So if you either win that auction or you lose that auction. It's not like Facebook where, you know, someone scrolling through their feed might see four or five ads in the space of, you know, 20 minutes or something. It's not like Amazon where there's gonna be 10 different ads under a book cover and way more if they click across. There's only one here. So you either win or you lose. That part is extremely binary. So when it comes to testing, it's different when I'm running a regular campaign. I would be a bit more conservative with these bids, especially if it's a small budget perma-free campaign, I'd be building, bidding at the bottom end of that range or maybe even lower, especially like the lower your budget is basically, you know, the lower you can go on that. But if we're, if we're running a test campaign, as I said, we want quick results, we want them now. So I will actually bid above, you know, I will bid above what they recommend. I would, I, I would even go, I would even go that high, you know, um, just to make sure that I win the auction, nobody else does. I bully them out of that slot and it's mine and I get quick results straight away, which is what I want. I'm still only going to spend $10. This just affects how many impressions I'll actually get for that $10. So um, I recommend just bidding high and then you can you know, be more conservative when you're actually running a campaign. But for now, bid high and make sure that you win that auction and you get clean and quick results. And then name, name your ad, whatever you like. Um, I usually try and do something because, you, you know, after testing, you're, you're going to have, you could have five, 10, 15 ads here. So just know, know who you're, I usually put in who, who I'm targeting, which was Thomas Harris. So Thomas Harris, and then, you know, I will put image one in case I decide to change up the image. So I know, I know just at a glance, um, I know that at a glance, the author name, the, the book title, who I'm targeting. And then I usually put in, you know, where I'm targeting as well, just, just so I have all that information at a glance in my dashboard afterwards when I'm um, assessing the results and comparing my, my different tests for different authors. And then, you know, once you have everything in, uh, just click the continue button. And don't worry, I'm not actually going to 
turn an ad live for, for Misty Rivers. Misty Rivers is not ready for prime time. So, okay, it's popping up and asked me to put in, um, put, a, put, a, put in a payment method. And you can pay with PayPal or you can pay with a credit card, but you will actually have to lodge the payment method with them before you run any ads. They don't, they don't, they don't give you any credit or anything like that. And they actually bill, they bill in, I think they start bidding in $50 increments and they start you know, increasing that the more you spend on the platform. Um, so yeah, the only thing, because I can't trans transition to the next screen here, I'll just explain what pops up on your screen. So as soon as you hit that continue button, once you put in your payment um, details, um, it will just show a confirmation screen with the ad and what that screen will contain is your ad image. And so you'll see exactly how it's going to look to readers. And then beside that on the right-hand side, it will tell you who the targeting is. So you can review everything and it will say Thomas Harris. And then it will show you the where you're targeting. It will show you the links. And I always like just to be sure, you click on those links like you can here, just click on it. Um, just to make sure that it's going going in the right place, because you definitely don't want to send readers to the wrong place. And if BookBub see that, they they could pull the ad anyway. So, um, but you don't want to waste your money sending people to the wrong place. And that's it. That's that's how you create um, a basic test ad on 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 BookBub. As I said, when I am running a real campaign, I will take all the winners. Like let's say I had three or four winners out of my list of ten, I would take all of them and target them together. That's really important to do with a proper campaign. Target them together. So you don't get any overlap. You don't get too much over serving where one reader sees your ad too many times. Um, you don't want that. But when you're testing, test each person individually. And a question I always get is, is it better to run all your test ads at the same time or to stagger them out, to do them like, like sequentially, one after the other when the results come in? Okay, so I actually asked BookBub this question myself when I, when I met them last year. And the answer is a little bit complicated, but it makes total sense. Now, in an ideal world, you would run all your tests at the same time um, because that will have less overlap. But I actually don't recommend doing that because it's not when you're starting out with the platform because you probably won't have as professional a nailed on image the first time you run an ad. You probably won't have you know, excellent targeting. You know, you're going to be slipping up in one or both of those areas. And honestly, most people starting out will need to improve the image a few times and they'll probably, as I said, kiss a few frogs before they find the authors that will work for them. So you don't want to lay out 10, 15, 20 ads all at once and then discover you're using a bad image. That's just a waste of money. So I, I, would, I prefer testing in small batches when starting out. I like doing three or four at the same time. Wait a few hours for the results to come in, then review the performance. If you see you know, they all suck badly, then you, know, you probably need to change up both elements. You probably need to change the image and the target. Um, if you're getting north of 2%, I think everything's working great. Okay, so put that ad image and put that author target into your winner pile. If you're down around, you know, if you're less than 1%, I think usually, you no, know, it doesn't matter how much you switch up the targeting, that image probably, or that targeting is never going to work for you, no matter how much you improve the image. But I find something close to 2%, like 1.3, 4, 5, 6%. Usually I can get that up to 2% just by making the image a bit more attractive. And just to tell you quickly, in this image here, one thing I could do to make that more attractive right away is there's no offer in it. And BookBub is a very deal hungry audience. You know, you're going to be appearing in this email with lots of big, attractive books from famous authors, all well presented, and they're all going to be either free 99 cent or 199 you're, you're competing against the likes of dune you're competing against um popular authors like cj author who cj archer who's going to have a free book she's a usa today best-selling author um you know you're going to be competing against you know classics so your ad has to be good so to really hook people and i talk about this more in the in the in the canva tutorial about how to make a book of ad that's going to go live in a couple of days but really try and put an offer in there um, i would I like this ad. I think it's okay for a five minute job. It's, it's definitely good. Um, but I would like a price tag in there. Um, you know, stress what the offer is on the book. If it's free, if it's 99 cent, 199, definitely lead with that, with the book of audience. They are a very, very deal sensitive, price sensitive crowd. Um, and just in terms of the price, this is very important. The price of your actual book, like the mask here, when you're doing testing, I would prefer if you did your testing with a 99 cent book. Now you can drop your price for a few days and just do a little bit of testing, or you can do the testing. Let's say you are running a, a countdown deal or you're doing just a 99 cent manual sale on your book sometime. 
be a little bit patient, wait for that, wait for that window and then just do your testing, you know, alongside and you can, you can see which, you know, authors and images work for you. Um, I don't recommend doing testing on a full price book. The problem with that is, you know, it's hard to sell full price books to this audience. It's not impossible. I've done it. Um, you might be able to do it too with a little bit of practice, but not when you're testing. You're, it's going to skew your results badly and you, you, you could miss out on some really, you know, top quality comp authors for yourself, like really workable targets because you're not pushing a deal. So I think a 99 cent book is the best because, you know, um, I think sometimes, you know, you can do it with a free book, but just keep in mind that you're probably looking for over 3% or over 4% CTR because it's easier to sell a free book because it only costs people a click. Um, a 99 cent book, you know, that means they have a bit more skin in the game. They actually have to take out their credit card or whatever and actually give you cash money for the book. So I think that's a much better test. So do your testing with a 99 cent book. Um, you can do it with a 199 or a free book, but... I, I think that's going to skew things badly. It's going to be hard for you, especially if you're inexperienced with the platform, to read the tea leaves there and see what's working for you. So do a 99 cent book, try and make the best image you can, drill down what you're targeting, and best of luck. And just persevere. Testing is the hardest part. This is the thing, like Facebook is a never ending you know, um, complexity and you're, you never feel like you fully mastered um, because there's always something new to learn. BookBub gets super easy once you get past the testing. The testing is the hardest part, and that's all at the start. So that's where the difficulty curve is immediate and it's steep, but after that, it's all downhill. So just persevere. You might have to go through quite a few comp authors. You might get some disappointing results, disheartening results, but just persevere. Have another stab at that ad image. Try a different author target and try and get that CTR up to 2%. And then once you are, you've got your first winner and a few more of those, and you're really, really rolling. And if you want more information on BookBub, I will have more videos. I also have a book covering everything. I also have a free course with Readsy that you can sign up for. Um, I'll put a link to all that stuff in the comments. And um, yeah, best of luck with your first test ads. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I will have more videos on BookBub, more tutorials on Canva, Facebook ads, all sorts of marketing things for authors. So hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell as well. And that's it. Thank you very much.